Hey there, it's John from Tiny, and I'm joined by Frederick Danielson, the product manager for Tiny MCE. Hi, Frederick. Hello. So, Frederick, let's dive right into things. Why don't we talk about uh, what's new in Tiny MCE 6? All right. So, we can begin with the new design. We got a brand new look. To be honest, the previous design was a little bit gray with a rectangle with icons. So, even though I personally designed, it was sort of founded on the idea of making an editor that could blend in everywhere with, with minimal effort. And while that was not, I think, a bad ambition, it was uh, also making TinyMC look perhaps a little bit boring, right? So with TinyMC 6, we allowed ourselves a little bit more creative freedom. And I believe Paul, our designer, did an amazing job creating a personality while not sacrificing any of the customizations options that you have with TinyMCE and skinning it through our different skin tools and stuff. Cool. Uh, and what else? How about the new MIT license? Yeah, uh, we changed our license to MIT. Uh, the open source version of TinyMCE up to version 5 has been LGPL, which is the most permissive licenses of the more sort of restrictive copy left licenses. But we have also seen some companies simply rule out TinyMC because it has the words GPL in it. So for us, it, the logical step was to simply move TinyMC to the MIT license. Uh, and that's just reflecting our beliefs that we have always had that we want as many developers as possible to use TinyMC. Absolutely. Yeah, that sounds great. And I think that's that's true. It's all about just reducing any barriers that might get in the way of adoption. And we want to make sure that people around the world are able to create content uh, with, with the least amount of barriers. What about our language packs? We added three new professionally translated language packs to the 35 we already had. And the new languages are Hindi, Vietnamese, and Malaysian. These are professionally translated language packs that has 100% coverage and are available for everyone who uses our free cloud version or are paying for any of our premium plans. And these are in addition to the almost 60 freely available community translations that we have for TinyMC. Yeah, that's that's great. And I think like the real advantage of the professional language packs is if, if you're offering like an app that you're charging money for in some of these regions, you can count on these professional translations that we've went out and hired a professional translation agency to translate all the UI, the messages yeah. and stuff. So you, you can count on a, a, high, a high quality translation with with these. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, just one thing to note as, as we're browsing the doc site here, uh, some developers might notice we've updated our doc site. You'll see a new look and feel, a new system, and uh, a much better search function on, on the doc site. Okay, cool. So uh, what about some of our plugin changes, Frederick? Yeah, so we're committed open source believers, and our aim is to deliver as much value as possible. And we have been rewarded for that commitment with millions and millions of users using TinyMC every day. But at the same time, we need to fund development and maintenance like everyone else, which leads us to continuously evaluate what features we offer for free and what make more sense as premium plugins. So with TinyMC 6, we made a decision to make our existing image tools and table of contents into premium plugins. And by the way, we renamed image tools into enhanced image editing. So yeah, we have uh, interesting plans for this, these plugins in the future. So stay tuned. Cool. And uh, just to confirm, those plugins are still available in the open source tiers of TinyMC5, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so Frederick, now let's take a look at some of the under the hood improvements for TinyMC6. Absolutely. So. We do not sell licenses to versions, and we do not need to convince you to purchase an upgrade for TinyMC 6. So our customers, you have access to TinyMC 5 and TinyMC 6, and you can choose to upgrade whenever you want. So also we follow something called semantic versioning, which states that any changes that require you as a developer to change something that can only happen in a major version like TinyMC6. 
This makes SignMC6 really easy to keep up to date and very predictable, which is something our customers really love. So therefore a major version uh, like SignMC6 is perhaps not a culmination, rather it's setting the foundation for the upcoming improvements that we have planned for TinyMC 6.1, 6.2, 0.3, and so forth. There is a ton of under the hood changes that are not really directly seen by you as a developer, but that you will get value from now and in the future, like improved performance, more robust code with less bugs. It's easier for us to maintain. Uh, but we can quickly dive into some of the improvements that we made with TinyMC6. So the first point on our list, we replaced our custom DOM parser API with the browser native one. So the DOM parser is responsible for transforming the text strings that you have stored in the database into HTML code that's rendered inside TinyMC. So finally, we can say that the built-in ones are good enough that we can sort of decommission our own custom one and remove a big piece of code that needed, you know, maintenance, testing, bug fixing, and so forth. Uh, secondly, we updated some options like link default protocol to always use HTTPS and the default schema is now HTML5. And this is all to, you know, keep up with, with, with the times. Finally, we moved some plugins to the editor core, which means you don't need to include them in your plugin config anymore. Plugins are not really aware of other plugins. They should be independent. This is sort of just best practices. So moving some of these often used utility plugins to the core makes them available to all other plugins to use. Nice. That also sounds like uh, with that and the new option defaults, it may make it a bit easier for newer developers to get up and running with TinyMC with a simpler configuration in some cases. Yeah, that's correct. All right. So what about Internet Explorer 11? Yeah. So we dropped support for IE 11 with TinyMC 6, finally. And I can hear the collective sigh from all over the internet. It's like IE 6 all over again. Not having to support IE 11, will free up a lot of time for our developers to focus on developing new and exciting features for TinyMC. By the way, if you rely on IE11, TinyMC5 still currently supports it. Yeah, so I guess that's it. Where should people go to get their hands on these new goodies? Yeah, great question, Frederick. So if you're starting off with TinyMC for the first time and adding it to a new project, you can head over to our website at tiny.cloud. There's two main ways that you can get TinyMC. The first one is signing up for our free Tiny Cloud. Basically, you sign up, you get an API key, and you load TinyMC from our cloud. It's always up to date, and there's a really clear and clean upgrade path if you do want to start leveraging premium features in the future. The other option is to self-host TinyMCE. So you can download the TinyMCE community open source package, and you can get it through NPM, Yarn, Composer, or NuGet. Now, if you're migrating from TinyMC5, our engineering team has also put together a migration guide to help walk you through the steps that you need to follow to make sure TinyMC6 works in your project. And as always, TinyMCE is fueled by the community. We're fueled by the feedback that we get from developers like you who use TinyMCE in your project. If you have any feedback or anything to report, please head over to GitHub Discussions and start a thread there. So that's it for TinyMC6. We hope you're excited as we are about this new version and you're able to download it, try it out in your project and give it a spin. Good luck.